Yo, what's up guys? Jason here, just checking in. Doing an update here. Uh, still living sober, still free from Kratom, of course. Uh, it's going good, going good. Just life's just, you know, blossoming. You know, have, have some good days, have some bad days, but more good days than bad days, that's for sure. So, um, just some things I want to put out there, like, that I'm noticing from quitting is, like, every relationship I have, like, my, my dad, my stepmom, my little brothers, my little sisters, um, I'm just getting closer, you know, and it's just really, really cool, and also, like, friendships, just anywhere I go, church, work, it's like, um, I just really connect with people, and conversation just flows, um, so often, like, I mean, I, I've been using, it's like, smoke weed, or opiates, or, you know, whatever, drinking, for so long, where I, like, literally felt, like, so, like, con self-conscious when I was conversating with people, and just, just having conversations, you know, I'd just be like, I always think, okay, well, what do I gotta say next to keep the conversation going, or what do I gotta do to, I don't know, I'm always thinking like the next thing to say instead of just really just being focused on the person and just really connecting with them, having that strong eye contact where you really like resonate and feel each other and, and I don't know, conversation is just a beautiful art, you know? <laughs> so now I'm finding like I'm having conversations with people and it's actually hard to like say goodbye because we're just talking so long. Even even just on the phone with friends and stuff. Um, it's just like I can really just relate and, and it's, it's really hard to even explain. But on Kratom and stuff, I'd just be so self-conscious and then of course that the feeling like, well, you know, I, I'd, I'd like another dose. I'd be hanging out with my family and they'd be like, well, you know, it's time to take some more Kratom, so I think it's time to head out now. You know, so I've, I've valued, I valued like using Kratom so high that I would even like leave my family to go spend time with Kratom. I, you know, put it that way, it's, it's kind of sad, you know. And another real cool thing is like, just some relationships are coming back naturally. Like I had a friend I haven't talked to in three years, like hit me up and it's just really cool. Like he's sober now too. And we really had just a great time. So it's like, I'm, I'm less selfish, you know, I'm less, thinking about myself and my feelings and and just just living more naturally how a person should live you know what I mean um, rather than just being so selfish and focusing on myself and another really cool thing that happened is I haven't seen my mom since I was 8 years old now I'm 30 years old now and Last weekend, I got to meet with my grandma and my aunt, which is my mom's mom and my mom's sister, you know? And when I turned 18, you know, my grandparents reached out to me um, and just told me, hey, you know, even though your mom's not in your life, now that you're 18, we just want to be a part of your life, you know, now that you're an adult. And so when I turned 18, I would see my mom's parents like once or twice a year, you know, and even my mom's sister, which is my aunt, since I turned 18. And so that that's awesome that I've been able to see them. And, and to be honest, like, I've never had the courage to ask my grandma or my grandpa or my aunt, like, about my mom. Like, it was always just like a an off topic, an awkward topic. They never brought her up. 
I never asked. And, and, and it's like, because the whole time I smoke weed and, and just use some sort of drug every day that, you know, I was like timid. I was shy. I, I couldn't like, I didn't have the confidence to come out and ask. So now that I'm living completely sober, you know, it's been over a week smoking weed, over a year smoking weed without smoking weed. <laughs> and it's been like almost 60 days without using Kratom. I don't I don't drink or anything anymore. So so last Saturday I meet with my grandma and my aunt and I actually for the first time since I was 8 years old, I had the courage to ask them you know, how, how's my mom doing? And, and then my grandma was able to, you know, just fill me in. You know, she's, I, I don't mean to talk wrong or bad about my own mom at all, but my grandma's response was, you know, your mom's mentally ill. She, she basically struggles with narcissism and, you know, like her whole life revolves around herself. She's, uh, she's not talked to my grandma for, years at a time um, she doesn't want anything to do with her own sister which is my aunt and uh, you know it just felt really good to to be able to step out and encourage and ask you know without being scared you know it's just like that's what being sober has done for me and quitting Kratom is it's like allowed the real me to come out with boldness with confidence with courage and and to realize, like, there's nothing to be scared of when it comes to stuff like that, you know? It's just, um, the enemy, fear is from the enemy, man. Perfect love casts out all fear, and God is love. So God is my number one priority in life, and he's just pushing all these fears, like, to the wayside, you know? Like, even the smallest little fears that would be operating in my life, like, they're just, like, most of them just just diminished you know and I still have you know f random fears and you know healthy fears and whatever you know growing you know you know you, you gotta put yourself in on you know, go out of your comfort zone to grow right and push through of little fears to grow and but like those daily operating fears of my life have just been trickling away and I, it's not like I'm really even paying attention to it it's just like when I actually look back and look at it I can see it and put it together you know so anyways it's just it's just awesome to hear uh, about my mom so I, not I'm not happy to hear her circumstances and what she's doing and dealing with and how she's deciding to live but to be honest man I have nothing but love and forgiveness for my mom I have no resentment no bitterness and that wasn't always the case when I was a teenager I remember having anger towards her like how could you abandon me how could you not see me since I'm eight years old you know and now just growing in the love of God like he's given me his love that I can love my mom the way God loves my mom that I have no bitterness towards her I have no unforgiveness towards her all I have for my mom is love and it's just so cool to see where she's at now so I can pray more deliberately for her. And I, my prayer right now is just like. That God would just wreck her with love. That she she would see that. She doesn't have to live. You know. With. You know living by like. Financial or. Status you know like. From what I heard like. You know, my mom's all about vanity. You gotta have a nice car, nice house. She never, never talks about having any problems. You know, and and she's just so self-absorbed, unfortunately. And the real life to live is to live with love, to live with, you know, serving, to live like for others, to put others of more value than yourself, just to live in humility, you know. And to do things to help people without expecting expecting anything in return. You know, that's that's the life. That's what Jesus did, man. Is he loved so much that he died for us. You know? I'm not saying we gotta love so much and die for everybody, but you know. 
the Bible does say to be a living sacrifice, you know, for God and for others. Like, we're all one big family here, you know? And so let's love each other like it, like that's the case. Instead of trying to, like, you know, I, I'm talking to myself, too. I'm not, I'm not just acting like I got it figured out, you know, but... Let's, let's treat each other like we're all a big family because we are. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, we're all in this life together. And it's a blessing. We've all been gifted, given this gift of life. You know, like just, just another day is a gift. You know, it's just uh, gratitude is so huge. You know, I've, that's, that's a big reason why I've been feeling so good is because I've been living trying to stay in that perception of just being thankful like man i got a fully functional body man i got a healthy body i got a place to live my bills are paid i got an awesome car that god's blessed me with and i just really try to look at things as like everything i have belongs to god you know and everything i have is is, is a gift you know I don't have a right to anything but to love, you know. It's just, uh, it's just cool. Just, just be thankful, and it's just weird. It's a weird thing that happens when you just like really focus and just say out loud or write down things that you're grateful for. Just to take the time to focus on that, because when you're focusing on what you're grateful for, you're not focusing in on the things that you don't have, or you're not focusing on lack. And then when you're focusing on gratitude, you attract more things to be grateful for as well, you know? And I'll just tell you, I'm just so grateful to be free. I'm so grateful to be sober. Sometimes it hits me, like, I'm actually sober, man. I'm actually, like, going throughout my day not leaning on anything and just living. And that's so awesome. And then these dreams, I'm having crazy dreams, though, like, of, like, smoking weed and relapsing and it's like last night I had a dream like I went to a baseball game and a, a concert and I smoked weed and in my dream because I've been having these dreams that I'm smoking weed you know and in my dream like I smoked weed and also in my dream I was like well yeah man you've been having all these dreams of smoking weed in my dream and now you actually smoked weed, you know? It was so real. It was so real because I was aware of the fact that I've been having these dreams in my dream. And then I smoked in my dream and it felt like so real and I felt so depressed. I felt so down. I'm like, how could you do this, man? You, you haven't smoked weed in over a year and you just smoked. And honestly, I'm grateful for that dream because what that dream does is give me that realization of how I would feel if I smoked weed or took Kratom again and that's an awful feeling it's guilt, it's shame and I don't necessarily think if you relapse you gotta start completely over but in a way it does feel like you have to start over and I don't wanna undo any of the progress I've made right now I'm just uh, I'm just enjoying being sober and just like, even like these warm, it's fall now here, it's getting cold in Minnesota, and like just wearing a sweatshirt and feeling cozy and feeling like, I, I didn't feel those like natural like feelings like just being at home in my warm apartment when it's cold outside and having heat on and just laying on the couch and just being grateful. Um, and it's hard to even explain the emotions but I haven't felt those things for so long because I've been living in this cloud that you know I had to feed my emotions so much where I, I I'd missed out on all the life's natural highs those life's natural you know good feelings so anyways guys it's getting kind of a long video God bless you you're awesome